collision with purpose, in pursuit of purpose. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the A Collision with Purpose Project Under the Spotlight. Here, individuals are given the opportunity to explore self in pursuit of their purpose. I am Dr. Axel Stevenson, and I'm your host. The A Collision with Purpose Project allows individuals to pause, take a quiet moment and listen, be introspective, engage self-reflection, and explore self in pursuing their purpose to unleash possibilities with far-reaching implications for self and others. Today, the A Collision with Purpose Project Spotlight is on Ms. Diana Clark. Ms. Clark is a humble servant and woman of grace. She is a registered nurse in the state of Georgia. She holds a master's degree in theology and a doctorate degree in ministry. Ms. Clark is a founder and CEO of Diamonds Well Place, a 501c3 nonprofit organization in Cobb County, Georgia, that helps single mothers who are experiencing homelessness. Folks, let us welcome Ms. Clark to the A Collision with Purpose Project under the spotlight. Hi everyone, it's just a pleasure to be invited to this platform and I am truly grateful. Ms. Clark, it is indeed my pleasure to welcome you to the A Collision with Purpose Project under the spotlight. I am looking forward to having an engaging, insightful and interactive conversation with you about a topic which I believe is arguably one of the most consequential concepts in forming how we function as individuals and ultimately what we perceive as our legacy. Wow, I like that. I yes, like Ms. Clark. So today you're going to explore self in pursuit of your purpose. I will be asking you a series of questions relating to purpose. Are you ready to conduct yes, I am. an exploration of self in pursuit of your purpose? Yes, Dr. Laxley, I'm ready. You're as ready. ready as can be. I, I like to hear that because <laughs> in this program, I like to believe that we're always in a state of readiness. There you go. Awesome. So, you know, purpose is one of those concepts that many individuals tend to have some level of misunderstanding or they tend to struggle with defining what their specific purpose is. So I believe that any serious conversation about purpose should begin with a definition. So I'm going to ask you to define purpose in a very general sense for our listeners. Okay, so what I believe purpose to be is my reasons for existing, the reason why I was brought to the earth, and ultimately what I'm supposed to fulfill while I go through the journey. Mm -hmm. So the reason why you're here. The reason why I'm here. Is purpose. That's so, my purpose. So given that the reason why you're here is your purpose, then it would be, it would be fair to, to say that purpose is an important thing to understand. Would you agree that developing an understanding of purpose is important for you and for others? Absolutely, because if you do not, then you're going to be living life like a miss. It's going to be like unfulfilled. It's going to be like thrown back and forth like a wind. You would have no regard for what you do on a daily basis and no understanding for why, you know, why you're even here as a human being. So understanding why you're here as a human being is just one of the benefits of, of understanding your purpose. Yes. Okay, so I think this is a good time to, to segue into your, let's talk about your purpose, your specific purpose. Can you define your specific purpose for our listeners? My specific purpose, I, I'm going to say that it's not going to be easily defined for the listeners, because only me, I'm the only one who will truly be able to fully understand it. I can try to articulate it. And my purpose, you know, when I look back at my life and the things that I have walked through and where I'm at now, I can say that I can see the path where I'm supposed to be going and I am at peace with that path. 
So I can say that it is going to be influencing others. So, okay. so your purpose is grounded on influencing others. Can you be as a little bit more specific and, and how would you, how would that play out in, in terms of influencing others? Okay. So I consider myself to be a survivor. I've survived many, many things in life in terms of, you know, um, traumas, th different things that I have been through. I've, you know, gone through an educational path and I started off not understanding and growing into understanding. And I'm like, there are so many other people out there who they themselves might not fully understand their path and they're looking um, for answers. I do believe that I have a lot of answers for people. A lot of answers for people. So you state that you are a humble servant and woman of grace. What does that mean? Well, okay. So I'm going to put my faith into it now. Okay. So I, I'm strong in terms of my faith in something outside of me that's directing me. Okay. And I submit to that. So faith to me is, um, as defined by my, my um, foundational beliefs, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith to me is me being able to manifest my strongest, my desires. And I submit to that. And I serve that um, a cause for the betterment of humanity, the betterment of women. You know, I serve a cause that goes beyond what I see in the natural. That's all I'm saying. It's not going to be easily, you know, understood probably by others, but I will try my best to articulate it. And, and that's good because that's what we do here. You know, that's what we do here. You know, you say you talk about women, right? And and I know that you you are the founder and CEO of Diamonds Well Place, which is a nonprofit organization that helps single mothers who are experiencing homelessness. How does that align with your purpose and what you're called to do? Well, Diamonds Well Place, how it aligns with my purpose. I myself have walked through a path where I was in a position of homelessness. And homelessness, with homelessness, you don't necessarily have to be even under a bridge someplace. You could be in um, a situation where you're staying with someone. It could even be a mother or a father, but you don't find a place there. You don't have a place of belonging. You don't own it. It's not yours. So while you're going through this transitional period, you just need, you know, to feel a sense of belonging, like you own this, this is where you need to be. So I've been through that process, I've walked through it, I understand it. So I'm operating this um, ministry, I call it ministry, or an organization out of a place of understanding and relatability. So there's tons of other people who might not have a roof under their head, they may be staying with someone and it's not theirs. And they just have this displacement, as, you know, lack of belonging. So I understand that. And because of my past and what I've been through, I can operate this ministry and know that I am walking in my purpose. Walking in your purpose. Talking about walking in your purpose. You know, there is the notion of living in your purpose or walking in your purpose or aligned with your purpose. Can you talk about that? What does that mean? Okay, and like, you know, when I first started, I said, it's my reason for existing, okay? So I, I didn't just come to the earth just to eat, breathe, sleep, wake up, make some money and have fun. That was not the only purpose. Absolutely, yeah, it's important for you to do these things. It's important for you to live life to the fullest, but at the same time, are you helping someone else along the way? Are you able to, you know, pull someone else up so that they can, you know, enjoy the benefits that this earth has? So when I talk about walking in my purpose is how much am I giving back to my community? How much am I doing that makes me feel fulfilled as a human being? Okay. Not everybody may feel the same way. Some people may be like, you know what? Let me just love me. Let me just take care of me. But to some of us, that's not fulfillment, me just taking care of me. 
how do you know? How do you, what is it that, that send a signal to you or tell to you when you're actually walking in your purpose? Is there a special something happening within you that say, yes, I'm here? Absolutely, it's that gut feeling. <laughs> it's that gut feeling and that confidence that I'm doing the right thing. And there's peace about it. So I am not here just willingly getting up and doing something just because I feel like this right now. No, there is this deep inner belief, this deep inner conviction that I am doing the right thing, that this is what makes me feel fulfilled as a human being. And it's not like you're out here trying to make a name for yourself. That's another important thing to um, take into account because you know, from my foundation, you know, what influences me was like, God says, I will make your name great. You know, so you're not out here trying to make a name for yourself. You're out here just trying to make sure that you're doing things that are, you know, following your moral compass. And then also at the same time, you have peace about it. For those individuals who are not necessarily understanding what their purpose is, much less living in their purpose, what suggestions can you offer from your perspective that would enlighten them and help them to get to that place? Well, what, one of the things that I would say is um, do nothing out of being anxious. You know what I mean? Don't do something, don't try to take on tasks that you know you're not prepared for. Do not do anything when you're anxious. Just try to listen to that inner being, that, that, that thing within you that is at peace within you. Because you may be going through a lot of things and you're like, okay, now I want to do this and I want to do that. That might not be the right time for you to get up and do something. You know, you want to be able to give from, you know, outside of what you already have. You don't have you know, X, Y, Z to give, you cannot give it. So you have to wait and wait until you're in a place of stillness. And that's where you want to really dig deep and ask yourself a question. Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I feeling fulfilled when I do it? You want to be at peace with it because whenever you're doing something, when you're anxious, it's never going to be the right thing to do. Okay, so intentionality, mental clarity, all those stuff. That's extremely important. Extremely important. Okay. You know, at, at, when you made the discovery about your purpose, was there a series of events or events? What was going on in your life when it, the realization hit you that, wow, I am living in my purpose. I have discovered my purpose. Would you mind share if that with our listeners? Absolutely. I discovered my purpose back in 1998 when I was pregnant with my first child and I was homeless. That's when I discovered my purpose because I, I, my eyes opened up to a whole world outside of what I was living in. And I didn't know. I didn't know that that existed. And based on the help that I received, I was like, hmm, this is what I'm supposed to be doing when I'm stronger. When I'm restored, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, from 1998 till 2022 is a long time. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a very long time. And it took me through a series of experiencing not just my own circumstances, but other people's circumstances, counseling other women who were going through, you know, similarities and not just women from, you know, my walk of life, women from all walks of life. And I realized that it was a problem. And a problem that I had committed my mind to working, you know, through and hadn't even done anything about it since 1998. So it came time for me to actually now move forward in what I had promised myself that I would do back in 1998. So in 1998, you had a collision with your purpose. Absolutely. You've studied, done studies in theology and a doctorate degree in ministry. Can you share what, what drove you in that direction? What is <laughs> your, what motivated you, inspired you to go in that direction? Okay, so 
prior to studying theology and um, ministry, I had been educated in the area of business. So I went to, I, I graduated from Baruch College with my business administration degree. I was very young and I want, I was adamant about doing that. I was adamant about doing that, even though I knew that I was being called to a higher level. I'm like, mm, I want to be a businesswoman and that's it. And then I went further and I got my master's degree in business administration. However, there was still a tug on my heart that you're kind of out of alignment with what you're supposed to be doing. So I worked in the mortgage industry for a couple of years until I believe it was 2018 when I had to fly to New York to visit this young lady. She was a single mom and she was a single mom and she was actually living on the streets in Queens, New York. And I had to fly there with someone else to get her off the street. And we took her off the street and we brought her to Kings County Hospital where she would get mental health treatment there. And then my eyes opened up again to my purpose. And I'm like, Diana, you're really not doing what you're supposed to be doing. It was actually 2014, my apologies. And that took me back to studying studying again because I was out of alignment because that tug on my heart you know that deep inner conviction that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing because this is your area of influence like this is what you were really created to do so you can work in a business economy and I mean the industry all you want but at the same time you're not going to be fulfilled and I truly enjoyed helping that young lady and that's when I was like, hmm, I need to go back and study again. So I also was working in um, the church at the time. At the time, you know, the person who I was married to was a pastor. And I saw all the different um, facets of people's life and how, you know, me going back to school to study ministry and you know, on a different level, how that will really affect the life of people. And that's why I went back to school because it was just, it was just really, really bad out there in terms of lack of the word, lack of understanding. And I'm like, okay, who can God really trust to, <laughs> to study this thing and really impart it to people so that it influences their lives and actually, you know, cause some type of change. And I said, okay, it's me. <laughs> it's me. So that's why I went back to Bible school. And that's why I studied and I just decided that I'm going to go all the way through. You can't go any further than um, get the doctorate degree. So that's why I did it that way. So uh, along your, your first discovery and your college was in 1998? 1998. And then you, along the way, you have experienced it, experienced so many different things. And then back in 2014, you made the light bulb came on again again mm -hmm. and you saw where you was a little bit off the rail and, yes. and and you got back on you went back and you study theology and done you know got your and nursing yeah. and nursing as well and so when I went to Kings County that's where the light bulb like I said um when you know went off the you know got turned on and and got to another another level of enlightenment because Inside of Kings County Hospital, what I experienced was um, that there were mostly women <laughs> who were in the mental health unit at the time. And then the next thing I saw that it was mostly African-American women and a lot of them were from the Caribbean. And I was like, this is really, truly an epidemic. And, you know, also my mom worked in the mental health unit at the time. And she would tell me about the different stories. She would tell me stories about what she encountered there. And I said, okay, well, my studies need to be geared towards doing something about this um, population. And that was women who were disenfranchised, you know, coming out of certain types of relationship, having children and just being burdened down with the, um, the burdens of life. And I needed to be walking in that path and this was not something that happened overnight now it was struggles it was me wrestling with myself 
me wrestling with myself and said, this is not going to, you're not going to make any money from this. You're not going to get rich doing this. You're not going to get anywhere doing this in terms of, you know, the things of the world. You're, you, you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, it was a wrestling, it was a struggle, but it was a, a cause that I was called to. And I knew it. So if you define riches by what you've acquired, you know, those type of things. Then, <laughs> yes. But Back then. you, riches, you have found it. Okay. So, and that's where maturity comes about. So, you know, when you're younger, you think a certain way until you begin to experience certain things in life, then your mindset begins to change. So back then, my definition of riches was stuff, material things. Now my definition of riches is my mental health, my peace, my joy, my tranquility, lack of stress. That's riches for me now. So you're at a place now that you're walking in your purpose, that your whole sense of being, your understanding of life is just on a different level. And yeah. what, tell me what that feels like. It feels good. It feels so good. I I don't even know. It's like heaven. Mm -hmm. When you know that you are at peace with yourself and you are truly confident about who you are and what you're here to do, it feels like heaven. There's no other better definition than it feels like heaven. You have transcended to the place of peace. It does not get better than that. In, in your circle of friends, is the discussion about purpose a common thing? Well, my circle of friends are small. It's small. Okay. And I'm going to be truthful. With the recent happenings, with the world turning upside down, with a pandemic, and the way how the world economy is, everybody's now relooking at what they're here for. Everybody is like, okay, anything can change any minute. The people that I know, they're like, anything could change any minute. Am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I fulfilled? And that's the, 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 what I notice now to be a trend. People wanna really live fulfilled lives. They just don't wanna be out here working, you know, aimlessly so because of certain events and I, i'm thinking that you're talking about the, the covid yes pandemic that we just where some would say we're still experiencing yes for some people to repurpose their lives and to yes. look at things a bit different yes and 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 because of that you're seeing a whole different level of discussion taking place absolutely in your circle people absolutely people are even shifting their spirituality people are shifting their beliefs people who used to be christians some of them are not christians anymore some of them are you know new age and some of them have gone into spirituality only there's just people are really searching for their purpose mm. hey, what about the younger generation hmm no, not necessarily so. I think they're, from my experience, because I don't want to speak broadly, I'm just from my experience, I truly do believe that they have become a little bit numb to certain happenings. So they're living aimlessly with, you know, lack of purpose. And we may need to forgive them. Like, my, I have young children. And they're just going about living however, you know, as a parent, you try to instill certain values in them. But again, they're going to have to live their own lives and have their own experiences. And along the way, they'll be enlightened. That's how I, I look at that. Right. So, but, yes. Some yeah. may be called to be a messiah of some sort or somebody special so that they get it so they get it earlier on in life, but not generally, not generally speaking. So is there any value in, in, in guiding, providing guidance around purpose for the younger generation? And a good place to start is in the family. In Most family, definitely. Imagine. Absolutely. Good. As parents, you know, we want to, you know, watch our children, 
watch their gifting, see, you know, like I tell my children, I have three da daughters. And I said, I know exactly who you guys are because that was shown to me. So I can notice the tendencies and the proclivities and say, okay, well, this one, she's gonna be functioning in that role. And this other one might be functioning that role and I can guide them towards a, you know, a path. At the end of the day, they're still gonna have to make their own decisions, but at least I'm giving them the foundation of, okay, believe in yourself, trust your heart. Um, try to make sure that you're serving something greater than yourself. The, these are things that I instill in my girls. And I mean, they are loving girls. And I'm so grateful for the children that I have. And I would encourage any other parent, you know, don't try to force your kid to become who you want them to be, but just try to figure out who they are. And then you try to encourage, you know, them to be who they're supposed to be. In, in a way, you're helping them to build on what they perceive their strengths. Yes, most definitely. I see. So for those individuals who are struggling, who are having difficulties and are not connecting with your sense of being what they're all about, what would you now suggest as, as a takeaway from our conversation, what is that one or two things that you would like them to take away from this conversation you and I are having today? For individuals who are struggling to find their purpose, hmm, I think that they need to spend some time in solitude, spend some time with them themselves and search within themselves to find out exactly who they really are. Is it easily done? Not necessarily, but you have to find your pur purpose for yourself. It cannot be just because someone told you what it is. It's gonna be probably a series of events that happen throughout your life. Look back when you were a child and, and, and follow the, the, the patterns. Okay, this happened to me when I was a child. That happened to me when I was a child. I survived this. Look back at your experiences from since you were a child coming on up. And that will probably help you. And I'm saying probably because that's what helped me and I'm just sharing it. But you cannot just listen to someone else preaching from a pulpit, telling you that's what your purpose is, okay? You cannot just listen to a bunch of videos from someone else telling you that's what your purpose is. You will find your purpose within you. Your purpose within you. So be introspective. Yes. Engage self-reflection. Yes. All important. We are pretty much close to the end of our conversation. Do you have any closing remarks, anything else you'd like to add? Well, for the times that we're living in, it's important that everybody find out what their purpose is because you're gonna have something that I need and I might have something that you need. Each one help the other one because I can't do it all by myself. But the earth, I'm gonna say this, is we are uh, ascending to a higher level of understanding now. So it's important that everybody spend time with themselves, find out who they are, find out how they're gonna impact someone else. And, and let's just walk this thing out together because I don't have it all. I'm called to help women, you may be called to help a, a man, you know what I mean? But we are all here to help one another through the journey. You know, it is noticeable that much of your work is, is centered and focused on women. Yeah. And probably for a good reason, cause your, your, your experience is sort of informed who you are. And, yes. and so that's the, a good place for you to give back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Ms. Clark, you know, I wanna thank you for joining me today on the A Collision with Purpose Project. Your insights will undoubtedly add immense value to the conversation about purpose. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to having you back on the spotlight to continue our conversation about purpose. You know, one of the things I learned from our conversation today that your purpose continues to expand, continues to grow. And I have no doubt 
that this time next year, you will have taken on some of the major, major developments in your purpose. So I want to extend an open invitation for you to come back on. Do you accept? Absolutely. I really appreciate that because I know we have much more to discuss about purpose from your perspective and through your experiences. Well, thank you, Dr. Laxley. I appreciate it. And I'm glad it was just an open discussion for conversation. You know, nothing's nothing scripted. It, it, it's good. And it felt good. Yes, yes. So, folks, this brings us to the end of this edition of the A Collision with Purpose Project under the spotlight. If you're like most people and would like to have a better understanding of your purpose, then please submit your short video speaking on the topic of purpose to a collision with purpose at gmail.com. If you would like to participate in an interview much like this one with Ms. Clark, then please submit your request to be interviewed to a collision with purpose at gmail.com. And please note that your video submission will be posted on our social media platforms. That is it for now, and blessings always. Have a good evening. A Collision with Purpose.